there is a question about where to position the engines on the lifting wing. If they're positioned centrally, the loss of power in one engine does not produce a significant turning force. The problem with that is that a pilot can't actually eject. The ejection seat firing up is going to get slammed into the engines moving forward. If the engines are separated out, the pilot can then eject, but then there is a problem that if one of the engines loses power, there's going to be a significant turning force. The other advantage to separating the engines out is that there is the possibility of putting a lifting fan between the fighter aircraft and the fuselage booms for the lifting wing, which have the landing gear in them, in front of the wing of the fighter plane. And then by having the exhaust cone turned down, you can produce vertical lift. This is similar to how an F-35 produces vertical lift. The horizontal stabilizers at the back of the fighter plane would have to be hinged to fold down in order to allow the engine cones to bend down and deflect thrust downwards for vertical lift. The other question is again the catapult launches. One other possibility is to go back to cable launches. When the Navy had propeller aircraft, they would actually attach a cable inside the wheel wells of the propeller aircraft and then attach the cable to the catapult for launch. With the two landing gear, it is possible to run a cable from the knee joint through perhaps a sheave block which would have a pulley in it and then the cable coming back and attaching to the other landing gear at the knee. The sheave block would then be attached into the catapult fitting for launch. Doing this requires some adjustment in the design of the landing gear. The stabilizing weight of the aircraft would depend upon how far center of mass of the total combination of the fighter plane and lift wing is in back of the forward landing wheels. If it's 10 feet back, it's 10 times W. If it's 15 back, it's 15 times W. Forces would depend upon how long the towing bridle is. If the towing bridle is 15 feet, if for the forward landing gear the knee is 5 feet above the ground and the landing gear is 10 feet in back of the knee, then the overturning moment is 1 third. If the acceleration is 5 Gs, it's 5 thirds times 10 or 50 thirds. That would mean that it would be flipped during launch. If on the other hand it is 2.5 feet high for the knee and the landing gear is 5 feet back, then it's the weight over 6 times 5 times 5 or 25 over 6. In addition, the center of mass of the total combination would be extended by an additional 5 feet. So if it was 10 feet, it would go to 15. If it was 15, it would go to 20. And the aircraft would be stable under launch. Putting the wheels of the landing gear further forward means that the design for the fuselage booms for the lifting wing have to accommodate it at a more forward point, And that means you need to have a wider boom that might produce some additional aerodynamic drag. After takeoff, the cable for the bridle could be retracted up one of the landing gear and into some storage facility inside the boom. There will be a short horizontal stretch between the two knees with the sheave block between them. The landing gear opposite the one through which the cable is retracted could then have a clamp which would open and detach that end of the cable. The cable could have something like a drag cone to help stabilize it. When the landing gear is extended vertically downwards, it will be below the height of the fighter plane, and so there shouldn't be any danger of the cable whipping up and striking the fighter plane. The additional length of the cable would then be retracted up the landing gear for a storage and would then be locked by some kind of clamping mechanism onto the front end of the lower part of the landing gear. The cable, you don't want to have any short turns. In general, the turning radius for any cable, you want to be at least 10 times the thickness of the cable. So if it's an inch thick cable, you want 10 inches. And really, you'd prefer to have at least 15 to 20 inches of radius. Building all of that into the landing gear is going to produce additional aerodynamic drag. But it's only for the takeoff sequence, and so it isn't that important.